Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome to another video on the channel. Today is the big day where hopefully my prep work pays off. If you've been following the build series, you'll know I've been working really hard on this Jeep and it all started with the drip rails. Had to basically cut those out completely, replace them. And then that's just led on to more and more jobs. And I thought, well, it's just time to get it all done at once, get it ready for the winter. So hopefully this is the last of the bodywork for a long time, hopefully. And just behind the camera, I've got some products that I have used already and I will be using obviously to finish this job. And we're gonna kind of go over all of that and I'm gonna show you the prep work I've put into various surfaces, whether it's bare metal, whether it's OEM car body paint, and whether it's pre-painted surfaces I've done myself. And then obviously we'll get into spraying the Raptor liner, which I'm a little bit nervous about. I always get a bit jittery when I've got to do spraying. Yeah, hopefully it goes well. We've obviously got a range of products here I've used and haven't used yet like the primers and stuff. It really helps if you're doing big surface areas to have an orbital sander. I've used foam sanding blocks too. They work very quickly. I've used a combination of 80, 180 and 240 grip paper. Um, and obviously masking tape and fine line masking tape. Um, you get you get nice, nice lines with that. And you can leave this stuff on for up to 60 days without it leaving glue residue behind and it'll peel off really quickly. This stuff here, if you put this on and you don't get it off within a few days, you're ripping it off and it's just stuck to the OEM paint. You can't get the stuff off easily. It's gonna be a pain in the ass. But I think the most important thing really is, is clean rags and panel wipe and paint thinner. Things like that really help in this process, especially having lots of clean rags. Um, the last thing you wanna do, basically getting into issues where um, you're putting dirt back in panels and pits and stuff on the paint. But another thing I'd say is brushes. Raptor liner has a nasty habit of pinholing in a way that you might um, put it over a surface and, and not be fully aware of its coverage because it's so aggressive, you can't see pinholes. And then rust starts to come through um, years down the line or months down the line, depending on your climate. It's happened to me, it's happened to other people. It, it's, it's happened to a good friend of mine. Some, sometimes if you're unsure about somewhere you're gonna be spraying Raptor liner, what you can do first is you can actually brush the Raptor liner on a, on a complete area. Say you've got an area where there's lots of little lines and stuff, you know, and you've got to get in there and you want to get the Raptor in. And, and that means that when you come to spraying it, you're really just putting a texture on as that second coat. Um, and, and what you find a lot of the time when you're spraying is, is that if you can't get into a certain area, if you keep hitting it and trying to spray it, you build the Raptor up too much in one area and it starts getting real glossy. It looks different to the rest of the panel. And, and then you've got to dust it from a difference to kind of bring it back and blend it in. You don't really want to have to be in that position. So having a brush, um, you know, really helps you get into those little areas. But let's have a look at the vehicle. Let's have a look at the prep work and the surfaces. And I'll show you some other stuff I've used. So in terms of prep work on the vehicle, we've got a combination of, of spraying Raptor liner over existing Raptor liner that's fully cured. And we're also going to be spraying Raptor liner on standard car body paint we've got here from the factory. But with regards to the, the existing Raptor liner coating, all I've done there is I've taken that down with a sanding block using 180 to begin with to take down the high spots and then 240 grit to finish it off and just give it a nice matte finish. Um, there obviously are still gonna be little ingresses in the Raptor liner that I can't get out, but that's not a problem as long as on the whole, you've, you've worked it down enough. So you've got a, basically a decent surface to adhere to, then it will bond on there brilliantly. We've obviously got existing OEM paint, and in my case, I'm gonna be spraying behind the, the trim of the windows. I did this job five years ago. As you can see, it's black paint already existing there underneath the window trim. And all I've done is taken that down with 240 grit. So um, what we'll be doing is we'll be priming that with 2K primer. Obviously, if you're spraying Raptor liner over existing Raptor liner, you don't need primer. You just need to key down the Raptor liner. But if you're putting it over bare metal, then I'd suggest a primer. Um, because Raptor doesn't bond well at all to bare metal, even aggressively keyed bare metal, it just doesn't bond very well. In my case, I'm using the anti-corrosive epoxy primer, which is a two-part primer with a hardener. Very, very good primer. I have used Upol's Acid Etch before, had really bad experiences with that, and a mate of mine's used it, and he's had similar experiences. Um, and I just lost trust in that product, so I've gone over to this anti-corrosive epoxy primer, the two-part stuff and I had really good results with it on the rear fenders, 
on the front fenders. You know, obviously I fabricated those a while ago. I've been running them, doing all kinds of stuff with them. And the Raptors held up great. You know, it's just a really, really good primer. But the biggest job is the roof. Obviously I welded in those new drip rails. You can see them there. Looking nice, ready to paint, have been for months. But that's bare metal and in my case I'm relying on a mechanical key again so I've scuffed those down. I started off with 80 on the orbital sander and then I went to 180 and then I went to 240 to get a decent mechanical key. I've wiped down the whole vehicle with like a panel wipe, like a degreaser. And, and I think the most important thing is having multiple rags so don't just use one towel for like the whole car. Just go through loads of them um, until you know now, now you can run over the whole car with a pink towel and, and it, it barely changes colour you know because the car's really really clean but I'm going to take this first can of primer and then we're going to start you take this cap you turn the can upside down pop the cap on let's give it a whack they say not to do that actually but I always do that and then we're going to give it a shake You're going to have to excuse the distance of the camera because obviously uh, my camera gear is kind of expensive. But we have some bare metal areas here. The primer comes out pretty generously, so do be mindful of that. So it kind of looked like I'm spraying the whole bumper here, but I'm not. Um, it's just that there's a lot of patches where I've exposed bare metal, so I kind of need to hit them with this. I started spraying and I realised I actually had the wrong filter in this uh, in this little thing here. So I've just put the gas filter in and my god, what a difference. I was dying before but uh, yeah, I just forgot to put it in. I thought it was already in there. So I finished priming most of the vehicle and I've used two cans of primer so far and I've got one left. I've unmasked some of this fine liner masking tape which is coming away really good actually but I was concerned on these corners here about dusting going underneath the tape because as you spray on the tape it tends to get a bit wet and lift away um, it's pretty good on these straights but on corners and things there's probably a better tape out there although this is designed for this but you can see the edges are pretty clean so I'm just going to remask a lot of these bends we've got on the corners here but all in all, I'm pretty happy the way it's turned out. The only thing I really need to do is get up top, check out the drip rail and maybe run a brush along the inside edge just to make sure that we've got everything. So I've used three cans of primer. Obviously, I've primed the areas with OEM paint and bare metal. And I ended up priming the original Raptor liner as well. That might seem like a dumb idea because, uh, you know, for example, if you missed the spot when you were spraying the Raptor liner on, it wouldn't be such a big deal because you already have a dark Raptor liner coating beneath it. I just had so much primer left, I just thought, well, just form a better bond to the Raptor liner I'm putting over the top. You know, whether that's the right thing to do or not, who knows. I'm sure I'll find out in the long run, but I imagine it won't do it any harm. And we're just going to have to let all this dust settle now. These plastic parts we worry about later. And uh, I'm going to have to give this a few hours, come back in, clean the area down, and then get ready to paint because... Uh, even on, even on the areas that have been primed, the dust from the primer is obviously building up in the air and settling down. Well, I imagine that diesel heater isn't helping really, but uh, you know, it's what you got at the end of the day.
The smell's not so insane in here now, so I can actually take my mask off. The primer's been sitting in here for around about three hours, which is a decent drying time. They, they say up to seven days before um, you need to sa sand it to then apply Raptor over it. So we should still benefit from chemical adhesion, um, from what I understand anyway, by spraying the Raptor on it now. Oh God, I got to put this on stronger than I thought. So, um, you know, I've just packed everything. I've fired up the compressor and, um, you know, just got, got to know the compressor a little bit. You know, this is the first compressor I've ever owned. So, um, you know, I just wanted to fire it up, see whether it could maintain 360 um, PSI continuously. We've obviously applied the grip for adhesion to the plastic parts as well. We did that about 15 minutes ago. It says leave for 20 minutes before you apply Raptor. So we'll do that first. And I've got a plan, obviously, of how I'm going to work around the vehicle. So I'm not just going to go in spraying everything and, and going crazy. You know, I'm going to start with the stuff on the wall because it doesn't need unmasking. So you can just leave it to hang and forget about it. Now I'm going to move to the front bumper because it doesn't need unmasking. So no problems there. And then we move on to the roof because it's a very large surface area with not as much masking. Um, but it's quite important to get the roof done um, because it's, it's kind of the main thing really. And then we move on to the smaller stuff around the vehicle that needs the most unmasking. And when we come round to the second coat, we just go through that same procedure again. And then hopefully we end up with something that can then sit in the garage for 21 days and cure. Because it's very damp outside. And the one thing that Raptor really doesn't like is moisture. I really hope this all goes to plan. I'm going to get the old earmuffs on, just in case the compressor is going to be going nuts. Get the safety glasses on. And obviously we have a fill line just there. I know some people have suggested potentially mixing a little bit less hardener to get a softer finish, but I'm just going to go with uh, manufacturer recommendations. And then we shake the sucker up real good. All right, that's what we're looking at around 60 PSI, I like it. And another important thing to note is, is always spray uh, directly at the face of the panel. So if a panel's like that, don't spray it like this, always spray it like that, or else what happens is, is those like blobs that form the texture become elongated so you always want to be facing straight on a panel basically if you can be um, it's not always a big deal but uh, you know it's the extreme angles that where it really shows Another thing you'll notice is some of the blobs are looking like really big and uh, and that might like freak some people out because they're like oh man I don't want it to look like that but trust me they reduce down and they go real small and when this stuff cures after like five days that's actually actually after 21 days but when it cures enough after five days you'll notice those areas that look really built up and really blobby actually shrunk down tons. Um, so don't stress out too much and when we come back for the second coat Just hold the gun further away. Just dust it off You'll get a bit of a finer texture. We'll just crank up the PSI, but this looks good to me. So I'm going to keep going
One little tip I can give is uh, this is the bottom of the three bottles I've used. I've heated it up with the with the diesel heater and I've drained it into the bottom of this and I've got a brush. And it just allows me to while this has been sitting now for about 30 minutes, it's it's not gonna smudge. Um, so once you've just sprayed it and you do this, you'll, you'll lose the texture, but I won't lose the texture anymore. Um, and it just means I can go over the areas that I've probably missed with, with the Raptor gun, because that's just super inaccurate, obviously, and, and just kind of touch up these spots here that, that uh, I don't really want to waste the last bottle on, to be honest with you. So it's useful to do this, especially if you're painting over a piece of metal that was bare before you started. Um, in my case, I'm going Raptor over Raptor, um, so it's not a big deal, but uh, you know, it's just nice to touch things up a bit really. So I've gone over the whole vehicle with the little brush and what was left over in those three bottles. And it's amazing all the places you miss. The, the problem with the, the structure you're painting is there's lots of, of crevices and corners and in order to get the gun into those places you end up layering the Raptor liner in areas you don't really want it to be layered in. So just having a little brush like that, wait 30 minutes for the Raptor liner to cure in a way that you're not going to disrupt the pattern and then go around with a little brush and, and just use the rest of it. And, um, and you save so much paint. So um, we're going to do the last coat now and then we'll be going around with the brush again in another 30 minutes and just checking over the vehicle um, you know, one last time and, and then it's just going to be unmasking after about, yeah, well, literally kind of within that time frame after the brush is applied, you know, around that same time. So we'll mix the last bottle. Yeah, there we go. That's it, almost on the line. So I've done a dust coat over everything, just filled any pinholes, used the brush. Um, I've done the best job I can basically, but now it's time to unmask and we're cutting it pretty fine as it is. So uh, we've got to start getting this, this masking tape off really, or else we're going to run into trouble. So I think we'll start really around here somewhere. It's already a bit of a job to, to see where the tape was, so this is kind of why it's good to just kind of stop doing this now. Nice clean line. Wow, that's that's real good actually. Nice clean line. Well that's all the painting done and the car's actually been sitting here in the garage for about seven days since I last sprayed it with the Raptor liner. Some references say 21 days to cure, most say within about a week to uh, be able to use it for hard stuff. I think if you're going to do a truck bed with it, start chucking like machines and logs and stuff in the back of the truck bed, I would genuinely give it like two weeks or something in warm temperatures to cure before you started like really beating on it. Um, or else it's just going to start to come off really and kind of be a bit soft. But let's take a look at the vehicle and let's have a look at the finished results. Bumper came out real nice, uh, nice textures, compressor maintained 60 psi the whole way. You've got no like um, onion peel or anything, the Raptor's really forgiving. Put one of the hood vents on too and you see I painted under the where the hood vent mounts and the reason I did that is because where I originally cut it it just just caused a bit of corrosion and what my plan was to just have a little lip of paint coming out from under the edge and then using seam sealer which I've done here to just seal the panel on completely so I've sealed around every bolt hole and I've used these corrosion resistant torque heads there these kind of little button head bolts they look real smart 
and um, you can see just the seam sealer just bonded to the Raptor liner that's that's painted to the to the bonnet um, all the way around. So so you've got a nice weather resistance there. I've obviously begun reassembling, so I've put the lamp back on. Another tip as well: if you do have something like this and you've Raptor lined it. Um, and this is something that you can obviously move. It's never really that loose. It will be tightened, but I just haven't tightened it yet. You can put a washer between the bracket that holds the lamp and, and the bracket that supports the lamp. And then what you, you get is a pivot point um, or a swivel point w without kind of scuffing up the Raptor liner every time it moves because this will shift around a bit. You don't want that Raptor liner kind of getting scratched and broken away over time. So, you know, having that washer there just, just kind of reduces that down and, uh, and it also what it does mean is, is you don't get water kind of building up between the two surfaces in here and then causing corrosion over time which, which is basically what will happen you're, you're giving the two pieces of metal the two surfaces the ability to breathe and that's really important the Raptor liner came out really well on the plastic um, it's got a nice texture to it and hopefully that adhesion promoter um, will actually help keep this Raptor on but you can still see the Raptor's kind of soft I can put a nail print in it and I bet you in a month's time I won't be able to do that um, because it, it doesn't stay that soft forever but you can see I've begun to assemble the trim again and, and where this all began the drip rail is looking great I'm so happy with the drip rail that was such a terrible job welding that in and, and when you look at the side of the roof you can see where I could have really taken my time with the welding slowed down but you know because I knew this was the finish I was going for and then the roof rack's going to go on you're probably not really going to see it but this trim here is all put back in and we got the Raptor liner behind that as well so I had to actually click these pieces back in over the Raptor liner and when you do that what you can find is you can chip the Raptor liner away um, so it's really important that you that you basically put a bead uh, of what well what I've done anyway on, on these pieces I've put a bead of seam sealer a good quality seam sealer, a black seam sealer as well, inside each one of these and, and then clipped it on and that acts as like a lubricant in a way um, but it also means that if any paint kind of does chip away on the very edge where you painted it the seam sealer kind of seals onto that and, and, it, and it stops water basically then causing corrosion where that paint surface might have failed. Now in my case I'm quite lucky because underneath the Raptor is original paint anyway so it's not such a big deal but there were some areas down here if you remember that I had to work on some corrosion points and this is a really bad area for corrosion on the exchange and you never really know about it until it's too late it's in this corner down here this corner this corner this corner and here and here and it happens on all the windows both sides in exactly the same spot and the reason being is water runs down here it goes just down here in between this little section here and it, and it pools with sand and dirt and everything else just on the top of this metal lip that this clips onto and then when the window goes up and down and everything else it, there's a little bit of movement I guess it acts as like an abrasive it wears away that paint and then it begins to corrode and the time you know about it more often than not if you haven't pulled all this stuff apart before is it starts to bubble the original paint just underneath this rubber sort of list here, this rubber trim. So it's good to catch it early. And I think if you were doing Raptor lining or you were doing any kind of restorative work on a vehicle over winter, um, you know, pull this stuff off, take a look. It's not the most fun job, but when you put it back together, um, you know, you can do, do a nice job with it and, and not have to worry about it for a while. So like all the other windows I've sprayed behind the trim, you may think, well, that's a really crap idea because now the window seal won't seal properly on the Raptor liner. I would, in, in this case, run some silicon um, just on the inside edge of this, just, just to ensure that that wasn't the case. But, you know, we've got this window here, which was the ori original Rotopack window that I built, um, and that is going to go back in, basically. But now I'm faced with another conundrum, which is I don't actually need this rubber seal at all, really. Um, I could take that off and, and this panel was made a number of years ago. You can see the whole panel was wrapped aligned. This is it's an aluminium panel of about four millimeters thick with a foam insulative pad on the inside to stop the frost building up in the winter. So it's, it's a really thick aluminium panel. 
Um, I wish I'd made it a little bit bigger. And then what I could have done is, is actually drilled holes through this seam here. I could have just basically bolted this aluminium panel directly on without the rubber seal um, and used this kind of seam sealer basically to create um, a weather strip around the back end of it and, and that would have been a decent solution. So I have a video coming up pretty soon of me kind of showing you how to make one of these and, and this mod basically. Um, but you know, I, I might actually move away from it because um, you know, you, you don't essentially need the weather, this, this rubber thing. If you're going to do this, you know, you can just bolt it directly on and it'll probably look better too. Now we've got this Raptor line all the way around here. And one problem you get on these old vehicles, and I see this on a lot of old vehicles actually, is, is where you have the rubber. Um, what happens is it creates an etch line all the way around the original paint. So basically over time, the rubber itself digs in to the original paint and causes a rust line all the way around like that. And, and then you get corrosion, going, uh, basically a line of corrosion all the way around. You see it on the front fenders, on the, on the original fenders on the Cherokee. When you take these off, you've got this line, this template of the fender. And in some areas it's cut away through the paint and started to bubble and cause rust. And it's just from vibration and dust. What happens is, is dust is getting in behind this rubber seal here. And, and it's moving, you know, every time you slam the, the, the boot of the, the vehicle, the, the hatch, I think you call it in the US, um, you, you, this window comes out a bit, it moves, you know, there's pressure in the vehicle. There are vents just down there, but still, you know, you slam it hard, there's a lot of pressure, it moves, you know, there's movement here, movement everywhere, vibrations as you're driving, you know, and it all just basically causes a decline of um, the original paint surface. So um, you see it, interesting enough, on old cars when you pull like, the, the windscreens and stuff off them and you see this line of rust all the way around you know, and you wouldn't think it would be the case you think rubber was your friend because it was soft but any two surfaces in contact for a long time on a vibrating machine um, are not gonna be friends forever um, that's that's the thing so going forward with that I'm not quite sure what I'll do inside the doors uh, looking smart Put a bit of a heavy coat of Raptor on here. I didn't dust this off like the rest of it. You'll see a texture difference if you look closely. You've got this nice fine texture and then you've got this kind of blobby texture just there that doesn't look quite as attractive. But that's not a big deal. It's inside the door jam. Um, and it's a good example really to show you guys of, of what it looks like when you, when you lay the Raptor on too heavy. It was what I was talking about earlier. I was trying to get something with the gun and I couldn't in here, basically in this seam, because I missed it with the brush. And I was then layering the Raptor too much in other areas that I didn't want it to be. And then I forgot to dust it off. So it's ended up taking this real heavy kind of appearance on, which personally I don't care about because of its location. Um, but that's why the brush is great, because this lip here in this seam, you know, between these two pieces of sheet metal, this was all done with the brush. Up here, little nooks and crannies, get, getting in there with the brush. You know, the gun just, just doesn't always have the accuracy. Overall, it's come out really well, and um, I've taken a few precautions here with, with weather and moisture. From my last experience, the way I mounted these wasn't so good. So what I've done this time is I've put a ring of seam sealer around each screw, and I've run seam sealer underneath this panel and around the edge all the way along the sides and the back here. And I've done the same with the tube steel um, quarter panel armor and, and the fenders here same principle but I've left the bottom open so water can always splash up like this when you're washing the vehicle but it's able to come back out but it can't get in and sit in here and then freeze in the winter for example and stay there for ages and then you stand on it and you crack it and you maybe you damage the paint I don't really know how, how that happens but some rust had set under there from just the water being stationary in in there for such a long period of time so you know you've always got to think about that in, in a respect, you know, you're stopping the water getting in, but you're allowing it to get out if it does get in somehow. This is an important area to look at when you're going to wrap the liner vehicle. Wrap the liner will make any coating thicker. So if we open this door, if your door alignment was off, you would instantly chip the paint away right here and here if the door alignment was off. I did my door alignment a while ago in the hinge repair video. 
So the paint came out really great here too. But I've, I've wrapped a line the bottoms of the doors as well. And I also used the Dynatrol cavity wax in the entire door. I did that several years ago. Um, but I've just refreshed it in some of these, these holes here. So the bottoms of the doors have been cleaned up and, and reprimed and resprayed, which is, which is always a typical rust, rust spot basically on these vehicles. Well, that's really about it. The other side looks exactly the same as that side. I just haven't actually finished it yet in terms of putting all the trim and, and the mirrors and things like that on. So um, I'm still yet to do that side. Um, I've really, really started on this again today after letting this cure for a couple of weeks because I really wanted to make sure that um, it was completely dry before I started screwing around with it. Just because I've had experiences in the past, um, you know, where it's not cured completely and I thought it had, and you know, I've been cleaning the, the body of the vehicle with a rag and I've accidentally touched the Raptor liner and, and then that's like completely changed the, 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 the kind of, um, it's sort of, sort of taken it from a satin to a completely matte uh, look and, and I was never able to bring it back from that. So obviously it wasn't completely cured and that was after actually three days. So you think it would at least be touch dry in a way, but um, it clearly wasn't uh, to a degree. So you, you just really want to let it dry, I think, before you start getting your, getting your greasy mitts all over it. Um, or else you might disrupt the aesthetics of the texture. And if it's like on the bottom of a door or some little thing you've painted that you like the look of, um, you might care. Whether as if it's like in the door jam or a bumper, it's, it's not such a big deal. But if you remember back when I was, I was spraying the, the rear quarter panel, the, the quarter panel armour on the back of the vehicle, you could see that I wasn't really caring much about the spray pattern. And you can see a lot of the time when I'm spraying the gun, I'm, I'm kind of firing it in bursts. And they generally tell you not to do that. Um, it's usually, it should be continuous. And I guess the difference is, is if you're spraying like the hood or the roof or a door, definitely, you know, these continuous kind of patterns laying it over on it on itself partially while whilst going down the vehicle and then repeating that pattern in reverse or, or going, you know, a slightly different way with it. Um, you're going to achieve a, um, a very uniform look and not see any kind of differences between the spray pattern. I didn't really bother doing that and when you look at the rear quarter panel you can't see any difference. It, it looks absolutely fine and I think that's because Raptor Liner is a really really forgiving paint. And if you get into a situation where you can see lines and you're worried about that and you don't like the look of it and you just want it one uniform um, sort of texture really, um, you can do what I do, which is on that very last bottle I had, I just did a dust coat on certain areas to just, just to blend textures. And you can just hold the gun really far away, like two feet away, and just uh, psh, 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 and just blast some texture onto it. And it just blends everything in together. And, um, you know, and, and it will essentially just give you a uniform look. And again, it's a really, really forgiving paint. But... Uh, if you are interested in seeing any videos about like putting the trim on and using those products and stuff, let me know in the description and I can film that for you. Um, if not, then I won't bother and I'll just put it back together because it's probably not really something anyone's interested in anyway. You know, I'm working my way through the projects and it's a great time of year to do it just because it's just absolutely hammering it down with rain every day. And the worst possible thing for this thing right now is to be out there. But look, thanks for watching. Yeah, leave some video suggestions in the in the description if you're interested in certain things. Um, check out the links in the description. Appreciate you tuning in. And I've actually put links to other videos of, of other guys who have done Raptor Liner tutorials in the description. And those are the guys that I've kind of watched and, and learned from as well. Um, so they've done some pretty good tutorials are probably worth checking out if you're gonna do this sort of thing. So take care and see you again soon.